everybody. Can you all hear me okay? Loud and clear. Yep. Okay, very good. Yes, sir. Uh, all right, well, uh, sorry to have to do it like this, but uh, I, um, it's real hard to get subs for Cal 2. And then also, you know, it's they're going to be doing it slightly different. And I didn't want to lose it another day. So um, I'm going to see how this goes. I know I sound terrible. I feel a lot better than I did last night. So I don't have a fever or chills anymore. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just grind this out and see how it goes. All right. So first of all, are there any questions? Um, I did send out the exam, the take home exam. Everybody get that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So make sure that you, I, I say it on here, you know, don't wait till two days before this is due, right? Make sure that you get, you know, get it going. Um, also, if you have any any doubts about something, the way I want you to do something, just just ask me. Because I last thing I want you to do is assume that I wanted you to do it a certain way, and then you you wind up doing it wrong. Um, like for example, on the first one, you're given two curves, and so you're going to wind up having to get limits of integration on those, right? Um, I never I never say here that you can't use a computer to do that. You know, I put here sketch the curves and label. So that means you can use a computer to help you sketch the graphs, to find the points of intersection. You can do all that with computer, with technology, all right? So the only things I want you to do by hand, I say do by hand, right? So if you have any questions about it, please get with me and uh, clarify that before you go spending, you know, 10 hours on something that you should have been doing take you half an hour. All right. That's due on November 20th, right? And I will send you all a link to upload all your work for that exam. Now, the whole point of me doing a take-home exam was so that we could get, like not lose another day because we're already a day behind in this class. So today we're supposed to be starting um, other convergence tests. We're actually gonna be finishing 8.2, starting 8.3, but by gaining this day, hopefully by Wednesday, we will be done with convergence tests, 8.4. Hopefully, we'll see. All right, so I'm going to get started. Anyone have any questions before I begin? No? Uh, wait, I have yeah. one. So all the stuff we're learning today, are they also on the exam as well, or? Good question. Um, for the exam, everything that is on this exam, we have, we've already covered. So there's nothing that you're gonna get today or later this week that will help you with this exam. At this point in time, you should be able to, to figure out the entire exam. Yeah, Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions? All right, so let's get, let's continue where we were last time. I know we all don't like Zoom, but actually Zoom works out really good for this type of thing because I can show you the notes, then I can do an example, show you the notes, do an example. So it might work a little better. Um, we were looking at the geometric series, right? And we said that all geometric series look like this. And we know that it converges or diverges depending on the value of R. So that's where we were at the end of class last time. So I wanted to give you uh, some more examples to look at. So we're gonna do these, these examples right here. We'll do these on a separate page. So there we go, there's our first example. So we wanna know, you know, what's going on with this series? Does it converge or diverge? So does this converge or does it diverge, right? Well, we have to recognize that that does look like sum n equals one to infinity a r to the n minus one. We have to recognize that here. So I hope that everyone sees that four is like the a, and then the three halves is like our r, and then of course we have the exact power we want, n minus one there. So everything matches up exactly. So we should know whether or not this converges or diverges by simply looking at the value of r. See here for us, r is three halves, 
And that means that the absolute value of R is also three halves. And that's bigger than one. And anytime you have a geometric series where your R is bigger than one, what happens? Diverges. Diverges, okay. So we, there's no work to be done here. We know right now, diverges. And we're done. Now let's look at the next example. So next example, same sort of thing. It looks exactly like a geometric series. We know what the A is. We know what the R is. We've got the N minus one, just like we need for the formula. So we identify R is two thirds. And that means that the absolute value of R is also two thirds. And that's less than one. So if we know it's less than one, then we know it converges, right? And But we can actually find out what it converges to. It converges to A over one minus R. So for us here, A was four. So this series converges, I'm gonna write down to A over one minus R, which would be four over one minus two thirds. And then that's four over one third. And then you can just simplify that, that's 12. That's it. Are these pretty straightforward? I mean, these first examples were supposed to be like, just like, okay, yeah, we've seen this, like, okay. Yeah, I was having no trouble with the homework. You were okay with the homework? Yeah. Okay, good. So this one's a little different um, because even though it kind of looks, well, I mean, it, I don't know if that looks geometric. I mean, for geometric, we need, we need this. And the big thing is we need a power of n minus one. And in this case, neither one of those are n minus one. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make those look like n minus ones. So I'm gonna force something to happen here. I'm gonna rewrite the original problem. I'm gonna rewrite negative four, but instead of to the n minus two, I'm gonna write n, and then I'm gonna do minus one plus one. That's that hidden zero that I've shown y'all a few times now in this class, minus two. So <clears throat> I'm making the n minus one show up by, at, by subtracting and adding one at the same time. And I still had the minus two here. And then on the bottom, I have seven and then same thing, n, I'm gonna say minus one plus one. But then down there, we already had, we already had a plus one. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna group these two together, group those two together, um, group those two and those two. So my next line should be sum n equals one to infinity. I should have negative four to the n minus one times negative four. Let's see, if I, if I take one and subtract two, I get negative one there. And then on the bottom, I get seven to the n minus one times seven squared because I put the one plus one and get two. Y'all see what I'm trying to do is trying to make it look like this over here, right? I'm trying to get a number to the n minus one power. So I'm like forcing it to happen. Now what's, what's in green here, that, is just, uh, let's see, I can rewrite that as one over negative four to the first power times 49, right? Because when you take negative four and raise it to the negative one, that's the same as writing it on the bottom as negative four to the positive one. And then I multiply times seven squared, which is 49. And let's see, what's four, four times 49? I can't do simple math ever. 196. 196, yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, uh, 196, so we have sum n equals one to infinity. So that's gonna be a number out front, one over 196. And then, very important, this part right here, since they are both now raised to the n minus one, both the negative four and the seven, what I can do is I can rewrite that 
as negative four over seven to the n minus one. And that's because properties of fractions, right? If you did negative four to the n minus one over seven to the n minus one, you can rewrite it by putting the fractions together. It's, it's this property, x to the n over y to the n equals x over y to the n. I'm just using that property right there from exponents. And now I have the geometric series. I have A, right? I have a number out front. So this is my A. I have some number, negative four sevenths. That's my R. And then of course I have the N minus one, which is what I needed for geometric series. So does this one converge or diverge? Converge. Converge, right? Because the absolute value of R is four over seven, which is less than one. So therefore it's gonna get, we're gonna have convergence. And so we say that this will converge to A over one minus R. A is the fraction one over 196 over one minus. Now be real careful here. When you put R into this formula, R is already negative. So it's gonna become a double negative. So it's gonna add there. So we get one over 196. Let's see, that's one plus four sevenths. Wouldn't A be a uh, negative though? Um, did I not put, wait a minute, hold on. Why didn't I put negative? Yes, no, it should be negative. Yeah, right here when we drop that four down, that, thank you for pointing that out, Greg. Was that Greg? Sorry, I, I heard, but I didn't, okay, yeah. Greg pointed out this uh, negative four to the first power is negative four. So this should have been a negative 196 on the bottom. Thank you. That's negative. That's negative. <clears throat> All right, now we keep going. One over negative 196 over, okay, so there we get a common denominator, seven over seven. Add those together, we should get 11 over seven. And then we can just do properties of fractions when we divide, same as flipping then multiplying. So we get seven over, and it'll be a negative number. Uh, 196 times 11, 2156. It converges to a negative number. Does that, does that bother you that it's negative or is that okay? This, this series alternates. Because in the, in the very beginning, right, we have negative four being raised to different powers. So sometimes that's gonna be negative, sometimes it's gonna be positive. And so what we're saying is when we add all these up forever, we have more negatives than we have positive, which is why we get um, a negative answer. Any questions there? Okay, let's continue. Next example, this one here. So does this converge or diverge? So we have to see, we have to see a pattern here. This is why I wanted y'all to spend so much time on 8.1 to see if you could figure out what's going on here. So I'm first gonna try and find a formula for this, right? It's like I'm looking at the numbers, just the numbers. And I'm saying, can I find a sequence formula for this? Do y'all see the do y'all see the sequence or no? It alternates, right? So. Yeah. Uh, powers of three on top and powers okay. of four on bottom. Exactly. Powers of three on top, powers of four on the bottom, and it alternates. In fact, I could write that as three to the first, three squared, three cubed three to the fourth, and then the very first one would be three to the zero. And on the bottom, we would have four to the one, four squared, four cubed, four to the fourth, et cetera, four to the fifth. And you need it to alternate and you need it to start with a positive. So I'm gonna go sum n equals one to infinity. I'm gonna do negative one to what power if I wanna start it as a positive? squared uh, n, plus n plus one n plus n plus one we can do n plus one didn't i say n plus any odd number remember yes. that? Yes. Say that once here 
So could I do this? I think I did this in class last time. Could I do M minus one? I could, right? That's an odd number. I'm adding an odd number. Negative one is odd. Now, the reason I'm doing that instead is because I know that the geometric series formula requires N minus one. Now, I could have used n plus one, but then I would have had to have done the, you know, minus one plus one to try and make it match. So I'm trying to save myself a step there. What about the three? I need to, the threes on the top. When I plug in one, I need to get zero. So what's the power on the three? Three n minus one. Yep, n minus one as well. And then on the bottom, what about the four? Four to what power? Four to the n. N, n right? So look, it's almost perfect. They're almost all raised to the n minus one, except the four, right? If they were all to the n minus one, I could put them all together to the n minus one, I'd be happy. But because this last one is not, I'm unfortunately going to have to write a minus one plus one there so I can get the n minus one that I need. Let's see here. Y'all have any questions, just stop me. Sir, so I have a question. Uh -huh. So you said you, you're using negative one to the n minus one, but if we'd use negative one and to the power of n plus one, would that have still been okay? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. If you would have done that, though, you would have had to have done this step, though. You would, have, you would have needed to, so say you did that, right? You would have needed to have converted that to negative one to the n minus one plus one, and then you would have already had a plus one there. You see what I'm saying? Like, you would have needed it. Because what I want to do is put all these together right now. All of those together. Oh, okay. Together, you see? So had you had an N plus one, I couldn't put them all together. So I would have had to have converted it to N minus one plus one plus one, which wouldn't have been a big deal. This would have just turned into negative one to the N minus one <coughs> times negative one, what, to what power? To the... Two, right? But what's negative one squared? One. One, so it really doesn't even matter, does it? Okay, so would it be okay just to put, so when we see an alternating series, we're trying to, uh, and it's geometric, it would be safe to say negative one and minus one, right? Yes, if you want to start okay. it, if you want to start mm -hmm. it off with a positive, you can use n minus one. Perfect, thank you, sir. Yep. <clears throat> All right, so now we continue. Sum n equals one to infinity, and now I'm gonna write that four on the bottom, right? The four to the first power down here, I'm gonna write that as this fraction out front. And then everything else here, I'm gonna to put together into one expression because they're all being raised to the n minus one. So it's gonna be negative three over four to the n minus one. So I'm multiplying negative one and three together to get negative three and then four on the bottom. And now I have my my R, right? That's my R. And then I'm being raised to the N minus one. So I have everything I need for geometric. I'm just gonna get right to this. This should converge to one fourth over one minus negative three fourths, which should be one fourth one over one plus three fourths, which is one fourth over seven fourths which is one seventh. When you flip it, the fours cancel. You get one seven. Okay, we good? We have one more example, any questions? The next one, I did one like this in class the other day, but it's a this one's a little different. This is like the one on your exam. So I'm not gonna go through the whole problem. I'm just going to help you get it set up. So look at this problem. Um, what I want on the exam, there's a problem like this at the very end. It says rewrite as a fraction. So I give you a repeating decimal like this and I ask you to rewrite it like a fraction. We did that with the problem at the end of class last time. So I want us to rewrite this as a fraction. 
And I want you to notice that what we have is the three fours repeating. Three, four, three, four. That's the part that's repeating. So the way that I would recommend you do this is you first write this as, let's see, two out front is two plus, now you got 0.1. That part is not repeating. So I'm gonna write that as 110. And then plus, now everything else repeats. So when I do this next part, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna count what position I'm in. This is tenths, hundredths, thousandths. So that means I have 34 thousandths plus now, where am I? Thousands, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths. So then 34 hundred thousandths. Hey, Josh. Plus 34 over, let's see, hundred thousand. Where are we at? Million, 10 million. So. Five. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have seven zeros there. And then we keep on going. So this becomes 34 over 10 to the third plus 34 over 10 to the fifth plus 34 over 10 to the seventh plus dot, dot, dot. And, and so what I'm getting at is what you can do now is everything out here all this forever, that you can do geometric on. You should be able to turn that into a geometric series. You should be able to get A over one minus R and you get an answer. Then you will take that answer and you will add those two pieces to it. So you'll do two plus 110 plus whatever this answer turns into, A over one minus R, whatever it turns into, I'm just gonna make it up. Let's say it turns into eight ninths. It doesn't, but let's just say that's what it turns into. Then you would add those together, you get a common denominator, put them all together and you create a fraction. Does that make sense? Yes. Anyone have a question on that? Okay, <clears throat> very good. We are done with this section. Let me just double check and go back to the notes here. Oh, no, we're not. We're not done with this section. Uh, we need to talk about something else. Um, here's what I want you to do. I'm, I'm going to go refill my drink real quick. I need something to, to soothe my throat here a little bit. I want you to look at this last note of, of the section right here. Just read through that for a second. See if it makes sense to you. And I'll be right back. Okay, did y'all take a look at this? Yeah. So all this really means is that there's two versions of the geometric series formula. And so throughout this class and other classes, if you run into a geometric series, you might see the index start at zero instead of one. And all it does is it changes the formula from N minus one here to N. So what I'd like for you to do is go ahead and go to your formula sheet that you have here and you are allowed to add to that formula sheet that second version i don't mind because on your on your test you're allowed to use these sheets 
So feel free to add in here sum n equals zero to infinity a r to the n. All right, add that in there, that's fine with me. All right, let's continue here. So as of right now, okay, as of right now, the only series we know anything about in terms of like finding what the sum is, is a geometric series. Other than the geometric series, the only other thing we can do at this point is to check to see if a series diverges, right? We have this nth term test. We said, hey, if you take the limit of the sequence and it goes to something other than zero, we know you diverge. If it goes to zero, that was that failed pregnancy test we talked about, right? So we, we are very limited right now on what we can do. If it's geometric though, we're in good shape. So now it's time for us to start looking at other series so we can determine what they do. So we're now gonna talk about something called the harmon harmonic series. And a harmonic series is any series where when you take the sum, what you have in the numerator is a constant. So a number, and then the denominator, you have some linear expression in the variable n. So I gave you three examples right here. So just notice on all of these, you have a constant on top, n to the first power is, is linear, right? Four on the top, two n plus one, that's a linear expression in n. Negative five, that's a constant on top, linear expression on the bottom in n. So all harmonic series diverge, okay? Every harmonic series will diverge. You don't have to do any checking or testing. You just have to recognize that it's harmonic and then you can conclude that it's divergent. Now I'm gonna prove it to you. I'm gonna prove it to you for this one. And then you're just gonna believe it the rest of the way, all right? So here we go. I'm gonna try and prove to you that the sum n equals one to infinity of one over n. Um, I'm gonna try and show you that this diverges. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do to prove this to you. See if this, uh, if this makes sense. Let's write out what this series is. If I plug in one, I get one. Plus, if I plug in two, I get a half. Plus three plus four, I'm uh, sorry, plus plug in four, one fourth, one fifth, one sixth, right? One seventh. Now to prove this to you, I actually have to go all the way out to 16. So I'm gonna write a bunch more of these. We'll go out to 17. Okay. That's what this is, right? We're trying to find out, does this add up to be, does it converge to a number or is this divergent? So let's go back and let's start from the very beginning. Let's do the nth term test. Nth term test. So when we go to the nth term test, we take the sequence and we take the limit as n goes to infinity of the sequence and that's zero, right? One over infinity goes to zero. That tells us what about the series? If the sequence goes to zero, what does that tell us about the series? It's inconclusive. That's right, it tells us nothing. Okay, we don't know if it converges or diverges. So this basically fails, like fails to give us any conclusive um, result. And that's just going off this first test, right? In turn, if, uh, if the limit goes to zero, it's inconclusive, we don't know what the answer is. Okay, so that fails. So then I start thinking geometric, right? Well, does this look geometric to you? Does it look like some, some number in front of R to the N minus one? No. No, it doesn't look like that, right? It doesn't look like we have hours that keep getting bigger and bigger, right? So it's not geometric, right? It's not geometric. Right, so then what we do is we say, oh, it's harmonic, right? It's constant over linear. <clears throat> and I'm trying to figure out what this adds up to be, divergence. I apologize that I'm blowing my nose here. 
All right, so here's how to do it. I'll at least turn the video off so you don't have to watch me. Um, so here's what I'm doing. All right. Now this is a this is a very loose proof. Okay, I can prove this to you in the next uh, section very easily, but I'm going to try to do this without like a formal proof. So look, um, I want you to look at um, where do I want to go to. Let's look at these. Well, let me write it this way. You, tell me if you agree with this. The sum we're looking at, okay, these two numbers together, okay, those two numbers together, if I told you to add those together, you get a common denominator, right? But really, just, just understand this. Do you agree that that sum right there is bigger than, um, bigger than a half? Yes. Yes. Everyone agree that that's bigger than a half? Yes. Okay. How about this to here? One, two, three. Wait, wait, hold on. One, two, three, four. You know what? Hold on. Back up. Back up. Take this. Take this back. Let me do it this way. I messed up there. Take not those first two. Take these two. Take those two. Do you agree that that's bigger than two fourths? Okay, so think think about this. Think about this for a second. This number right here, one third, is bigger than a fourth, right? So yeah. if if I had replaced it with a fourth, one fourth plus one fourth would be two fourths. So if, in other words, if these were both one fourths, then together they would be two fourths. But the one third is bigger than a fourth. So this, these two together should be bigger than two fourths, which is what we're saying is that it's bigger than a half. Similarly, if we take these four terms, look at one eighth here. One eighth is the smallest number in that list, right? All the other numbers are bigger. One seventh is bigger than one eighth. One sixth is bigger than one seventh. One fifth is bigger than one sixth, right? So all these numbers together should be bigger than me doing four of those one eighths. So it should be bigger than four eighths. You all buy that? Yes. So this should be bigger than a half as well. Now take all of these out to 16. The smallest number in that list is 16, right? Mm -hmm. All of these other numbers are bigger than 116. So if I put them all together, I'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six. You're seven. missing one over 15, one. sir. What am I missing? One over 15. Oh, yeah. I'm missing one over 15. Thank you. I'm trying here. I'm trying. Mm -hmm. okay. It's hard to believe that about six hours ago, I was like shivering, sweating under the covers. So. Um, all right, so I'm trying. All right, so all those together, that's eight things, right? That should be bigger than eight over 16, which is bigger than a half, right? And I could keep doing this. Now, how many, how many terms am I going to go out now? How many am I going to go grab? Here I took eight of these, right? The one before it, I looked at these four. The one here, I took these two. So what do you think? I'm going to grab the next one. 16. 16 of them, which will take me all the way out to 1 over 32. And so if I grab 16 of them, I can say the next one would be bigger than 16 over 32, which is bigger than a half. So basically what I'm saying is this, that if you take the sum, n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n, that sum is bigger than taking the sum, n equals 1 to infinity of just 1 half. See, this, this second one here just means one half plus a half plus a half plus a half forever. And that becomes infinite, right? This right here becomes infinite. If you do a half plus a half plus a half, 
it blows up, right? Becomes infinitely big. And the sum that we're looking at is bigger than that. Does that reasonably convince you or no? Can you live with that? That a harmonic diverges? <clears throat> All right, so there's nothing more to do with harmonic. If you look at it, these, you would just look at them visually. You would say, hey, those are harmonic. You'd write down their harmonic, constant over linear expression, diverges. Done, move on, okay? All right. So we know that the geometric series, we can find the sum if it converges, right? Geometric, it's A over one minus R. If it's harmonic, it diverges, right? <clears throat> the only other series in this class, the only other series that we will ever be able to find the sum of is what we call a telescopic or collapsing series. All right, so we're going to have to look at this because these are these are a little bit tricky. All right, so let me grab this and we're going to go do this problem. All right, this is your first example of what's called a telescopic or collapsing series. So I want to remind you what we did last class. I want to remind you of something. When we are talking about the definition of convergence for a series, let me move back up here. I said, let's clarify. Here it was. So I said, if you're given an infinite series, right? If you're given an infinite series, then S sub N is the nth partial sum, which means we're just going to add up the first n pieces of the series. And then what we do is we try and find, that creates a new sequence, capital S sub n, and we try and figure out what happens as n goes to infinity. Generally speaking, that's hard to do. It's hard to come up with that formula for S sub n. So, but if we can, that's what we need to do, all right? So just keep that in mind, but I'll come back to this as I move through this, as I do this problem. So here we go. First, first things first, nth term test. What happens if you do the nth term test on this? Take the limit of that as n goes to infinity, and what do you get? Approach to zero. Zero, which tells us nothing, right? Tells us nothing. All right. Is it geometric? Does it look like sum a r to the n minus one? Does it look like that to you? No. No, right? Okay. Um, is it harmonic? Does it look like a constant over a linear expression? No. No, because it's quadratic in the bottom, right? So right now, we've never seen anything like this. All right. So on a test, I will ask you on a problem like this, I will ask you to find the sum. Now, when I ask you to find the sum, that's a hint, that is a hint to you that this is either geometric or telescopic because those are the only two we'll ever be able to find the sum of in this class. So it's not geometric. So by me saying find the sum, you should know that this is telescopic. So let's see, let's just look at how I'm gonna do this. Just over here on the side, I want you to just watch me, all right? You may not like this, but it's the first problem, so. Okay, what I did first was I factored the denominator, okay? And then, uh, and I'm just looking at the sequence. I'm not actually looking at the sum right now. I'm just looking at the sequence itself. I'm going to rewrite that as A over N plus B over N plus one. I'm doing partial fractions on this. We did that back, you know, when we were doing integrals. So I clear the fractions out. I'm going to work kind of quickly through this. Clear the fractions. And then let me get A. So I'm going to let N be, let N be zero. If I do that, I get A is equal to one. And then if I let N be negative one, that will get me that B is negative one. 
So I'm trusting that you can do this, right? Partial fraction decomposition. I trust that you can do that on your own, right? Now, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna rewrite this as sum n equals one to infinity. And I'm gonna use what I just got over there. A is one over n minus one over, I'm oh, sorry, negative one. Uh, let me write this one. Plus negative one over n plus one. Do you all agree that that's the, the same thing written out just with the partial fractions? Mm -hmm. Right. Now, tricky, careful here. A lot of students at this point want to do this. Don't write this down. A lot of students want to do this next. Uh, yeah, I'll do it. Sorry, let me change that to a plus in the middle. A lot of students want to break this sum up into two sums, which seems reasonable, but that is actually not, not allowed. You can only break up a sum like that if those series converge, all right? Do you all see that? Can anyone identify this series and this series, what types of series those are? The first one's linear, right? Okay. Or like yeah. harmonic. Yeah, they're both harmonic, right? And they both diverge. You are you can never break up a series into two pieces if if they diverge. You can only break them up if they converge. So that that algebra that we just did is not allowed. All right. So I guess what I'm saying is this: sum n equals one to infinity of some sequence a sub n plus or minus b sub n is only equal to this. You can only split it up. Only if they, only if they converge. If they diverge, you're not allowed to split it up. So for, for us, we can't split this up, all right? We're not allowed to do this, which means what do we do? Well, you ready? This is where things are gonna get pretty interesting. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start writing out the first few terms of this. Okay, so this becomes, all right, let's plug in one. If we plug in one, I'm gonna get one over one, plus negative one over two, right? That's what happened if I plug in one. Now I'm gonna plug in two. So if I plug in two, I get one over two plus negative one over three. And now I'm gonna plug in three. So when I plug in three, I get one over three plus negative one over four. Who sees it? They're canceling out. Yeah, things are canceling. Do you all see that? We have a one negative one half that cancels with the half. We've got a one third, negative one third cancels with the one third. We got a negative one fourth cancels with the one fourth. And that's going to keep happening, isn't it? It's going to keep happening. So what do you think our answer is at this point? What do you think the answer is going to be? One. One. That is correct. That is the correct answer. However, however, that's not the way we do it. We have to do, we have to do this step. We have to do this. We're given a series, right? And we want to know if it converges or diverges. So what we need to do is we need to find a formula for the nth term, the, the sum, right? The sum of the first n pieces. And then we need to figure out what that sequence goes to. All right, we have a good idea right now that it's gonna to go to one, but we need to prove it rigorously. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna say, okay, here's what S sub N is. S sub N is what I get when I, when I do this sum.
and I keep doing it, but I stop. I actually stop at the at the nth one. So that means out here at the very end. Remember, this is what we what we got when we plugged in one, right? This is n is two. This is n is three. And at the very end, this is when n is n. So what happens when you plug in n to the very to this uh, formula? The very last one should be one over n plus negative one over n, n plus one, right? That's the one right there at the very end. Like if I stop, that's what I'm saying. The infinite series goes forever, but if I stop it at the end term, that's the very last term, right? What's the one right before that one? There, I'm stopping at n minus one, right? So what's what does that look like in here? It's all these ends, but take take one away. So what would the first first term be here? One over what? N minus one. It'll be n minus one plus negative one over what? And this then what would the one in front of that one look like? One over something plus negative one over something. What would be underneath those? You know, the first one would be what? Do you know what I'm doing? Two. N minus two, yep. And then what about under this one? N minus one. N minus one. Do you understand what I'm doing here? At the very end, I'm, I'm going to, you know, if we stopped at N, and then I'm looking at the ones right before it, what they would look like. And I'm doing that so I can see the pattern of cancellation. See, I know the negative one half, positive one half go away. I know the negative one third and positive one third go away. How about this negative one fourth? Does it cancel with something? This negative one fourth? Yes. Yeah, something right in there, right? It cancels with the next one in there. And then dot, 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 everything cancels. Now, how about this one right here? How about the, the one over n minus two? Does it cancel? Does it go away? Yeah. Yeah, from where though? What cancels it out? The term preceding it, that second preceding. term and that, yeah. Exactly, the one in front of it is what kills that one off, right? Yes. And then this one here, does it cancel? Yes. Those two, right? Cancel. Here, does that cancel? Mm -hmm. Yes, that one, right? Gone. What about the very last term? Does it cancel? No. No, because we stopped, right? We stopped. So the only thing we have left is what I have in blue. We have the very first term and we have the very last term. Everything else cancels. So what I can do is I can write S sub n is one plus negative one over n plus one. And what I've done is I have found a formula for S sub n, haven't I? And now to figure out what the series does, all I need to do is take the limit as n goes to infinity of s sub n, which is the limit as n goes to infinity of one plus negative one over n plus one, which yes, this still goes to one, right? Because this piece does go to zero. So the answer is one. <laughs> Think about that for a minute. Why do they call it telescopic or collapsing? Think about that. What do y'all think? How do you think they call it a collapsing series? It ends where it begins. Yeah, the only things the only thing left, right, was the two ends, right? The first piece and the last piece were the only thing that we had left. So I think about it like a bridge. You know, you have a bridge, you've got the left side, and you got a bridge going across, right? It's like everything in the middle 
Everything in the middle collapsed. Everything in the middle fell. The only thing that was left were the two sides. And then the other telescopic, they call it telescopic. Remember the old, old school um, telescopes that look like this? Yeah. And then they collapse down, right? And what you wind up is you have this big long thing and then it collapses down until like just the two ends come together. That's why they call it telescopic. So on your final exam, okay, on your final exam, if you do this, if you take this and you're like, okay, I'm going to do partial fractions, then you rewrite it, and then you write this, and then from this right here, you give me an answer equals one and box it, I'm going to take off a lot of points because you must find a formula for S of N, and you must figure out what that formula is, then take the limit, and then give me one. Right? Not because I'm trying to be mean, but because that's what you have to do because it doesn't always turn out the way you think it would turn out. I'll give you an example. Another example, where is it? Let's do this one. Okay. So look at this one. Oh, check this out. Let's try nth term test first. That's the pregnancy test, right? Take the limit as n goes to infinity of natural log of n plus three over n. And of course the inside of this goes to infinity over infinity. So you can do L'Hopital on that. You're gonna get a one on the inside. <clears throat> and then that goes to natural log of one, but natural log of one is zero. So that test tells us nothing. Is it geometric? Um, no, not even close, right? Is it harmonic? What that, Ash? Oh, sorry, I just said yes. Yeah, but it's, uh, it's not harmonic, right? It's not a constant over linear. And, oh, I forgot to put up here, find the sum. That's telling you that it's, either geometric or telescopic. All right. <laughs> so in the last problem, what we did was we took the expression we were given and we rewrote it in a way that we started to get things that would be like plus something minus something, plus something minus something, so that we would get collapsing to happen. Here, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna use properties of logs to rewrite this. as natural log of n plus three minus natural log of n. But that's just a property of logs. If you have a single log and you have division inside, you can split it into two logs with subtraction between the two logs. So what's nice about that is that I can start writing this out now, right? This is gonna be, let's see, let's plug in one. So we get natural log of four minus natural log of one. Right, that's what I get when I plug in one. Plus, now let's plug in two. So natural log of five minus natural log of two. Plus, now natural log of six minus natural log of three. Are we getting any canceling here? No. No, right? Not yet. Let's keep going. Where does it happen? Oh, right there. I finally got it. To, do y'all see that we have natural log four up here? And do you see that there's a minus natural log four back here now? Do y'all see that those are going to cancel each other out? Mm -hmm. And when I do the next term, it'll be natural log eight minus natural log five. Does that natural log five go away? Yes. Yeah, do y'all see it right there? <clears throat> the next term, I'm gonna get canceling, right? 
natural log nine, and then I'm gonna have minus natural log six. That natural log six should go away. Let me see this one and that one go away. So what doesn't go away? What doesn't go away? The first three uh, subtractions. The first three of these, this one, this one, and that one, those three never went away. Should everything else down down the way go away? Yes. Yeah. What do you think? Yes. Not the not the last three. What last three? Uh, the like natural log of seven, eight, nine. Like if you kept going, those wouldn't cancel out, right? Uh, well, seven would because what's the next one coming up? What's the next term here? It's natural so, log of ten, right? Minus natural log of seven. But if you stop at n, though. Oh yeah. Okay. Yes. So Greg, you're, you're looking at our next step right now, right? Right now, I'm just trying to figure out what happens if we go forever, right? If I go forever, I'm seeing a pattern that things are going to start canceling, right? This one and this one go away. This one and this one go away. This one and this one go away. Then I have this natural log of seven. We'll cancel out with that next one here, right? So watch, I'm going to type something up and let's see if this makes sense to you. I'm going to say this in words. The first term cancels with second term. Let's see. This first term here in this parenthesis cancels with the second term here, but how many, how many, um, how many elements downstream? So we go one, two, three down, but three down. Does that make sense to you what I'm saying? If, if, if you go anywhere in this series, right? Anywhere in this series, if, if you wanna know what's happening, go to the first guy. So let me just see, here's our first guy right there in green. That's a first guy, right? That's a first term. It will cancel with the second term, but I have to go three down from that. So I go one, two, three, here's the three down, and then there it is, the second one. Another way I could have said this, I could have said second terms <clears throat> cancel with first terms, but three up. I'm gonna say upstream. How about that upstream and downstream? I'm just trying to like verbalize the pattern I'm seeing of cancellation. <clears throat> Believe it or not, that's a good practice to get into when you're doing these problems is to like verbally state what the pattern of cancellation is. Okay. So it looks to me at this point that everything is going to cancel except these first three. It looks like everything else downstream is gonna start canceling away. But to be sure, I have to now find the nth partial sum. So I'm gonna do this same thing again. I'm gonna write S sub n, start writing the first one, natural log four minus natural log one, then plus now natural log five minus natural log two then plus natural log six minus natural log three, and then plus natural log seven minus natural log four. All right, maybe another one, I don't know. Natural log eight minus natural log five, plus dot, dot, dot. Now I'm out of room here because I'm gonna definitely not have enough space there. So I'm gonna go to the line below it. Let me think about what my last term would be. My very last term, if I stopped at n, would be natural log of, I forgot the formula, let me go back up here. n plus three and, my, and then n. So this will be n plus three and then minus natural log n. That's what would happen if I stop at n. What would the one before that one look like? 
What do y'all think? What would the one right before that look like? L and N plus two minus L and N minus one. Good, N plus two minus natural log of N minus one. So all we're doing is subtracting one from each of these, right? Take that one, subtract one, take that one, subtract one. Now, I'm gonna keep going. And I'm going to stop when I actually see one of my cancellations occur, which according to what I typed earlier, I've got to go at least three upstream from this to see the cancellation, which I think I'm there, but I'm going to do one more. Natural log of n plus one minus natural log of n minus three plus dot, dot, dot. Okay, all good? Questions right now? Let's start doing some cancellation. First terms cancel with the second term two down, or three downstream. So let me start with this first term. That first term should cancel with the second term three down. That one right there, they're gone. On the uh, second row, you wrote ln yeah. n plus two twice. Did I not subtract okay, n plus two, n plus one? Oh, yeah, that should be n plus one, right? And this one should be n. Is that the only one I messed up? n, n minus one, n minus two, n minus, yeah, thank you. That's right. <laughs> so that first term here canceled with the second one, two down. How about this natural log of five? Does it have something to cancel with? Well, three down, second term, they cancel. How about this next first term, natural log of six? Does it cancel? Is there a second term three down from that? Yes. Yeah, somewhere in this dot, 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 right? There's dot, dot, dot here continues. Somewhere in that dot, dot, dot is the natural log of six being subtracted. So that's going to go away. How about the natural log of seven? Somewhere in that dot, 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 right? It goes away. Natural log of eight. That's a first term. Somewhere in this dot, 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 it goes away. <clears throat> now, looking at the negative natural log of one. That's a second term, isn't it? And for a second term to cancel, I have to be able to go three upstream, but there's nothing upstream of this. There's nothing upstream of this, so it stays. Same with this negative natural log of two. There's nothing there upstream. And here, this negative natural log of three. Those three terms in yellow stay. Everything else is gone in that first row. Now let's go look at the bottom row, and I'm going to start from the right side. How about this negative natural log of n? That's a second term, right? For it to cancel, I need to look for a first term three upstream. And it's up here, isn't it? It's right there. Those two go away. How about negative natural log of n minus one? That's a second term. Will it cancel? What do you think? It needs something three upstream, right? Is there something three upstream? Well, I didn't write it, but it's there, isn't it? Somewhere in the dot, 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 it's in there. So that's gonna go away. I'm looking at all my second terms right now. I'll look at the first terms in a minute. These somewhere, this one right here is gonna cancel with something in the dot, dot, dot. It's gonna go. All my second terms over here are going to go because there's something in the dot, dot, dot that'll kill it off. The problem we run into is this, this, and this. Those three don't, they're first terms and they don't have anything three down from them to cancel with. So they stay here. They don't go away. So what's in yellow stays and what's in green stays which means my formula S sub n 
is negative natural log of one minus natural log of two minus natural log of three, but we have all the green pieces, plus natural log of n plus one, plus natural log of n plus two, plus natural log of n plus three. And now if I let n go to infinity, what happens when n goes to infinity? What happens to this, this, and this when n goes to infinity? Those go where? Infinity. Infinity, right? Which means that this diverges. Sir? Yes. Would this also still be considered a telescopic or harmonic? Yes. yes, it's considered telescopic because we still do have that pattern where things in the middle are canceling out and all we're left with are the two ends. But the problem with this one is that one of the ends, right? This first end, this mm -hmm. first end of the telescopic, that one, that goes to a number, right? Yes. But it's that backside, right? The, the, far, the right end of it, that goes to infinity. So it's still telescopic. It's just that it doesn't converge, it diverges. Got it, thank you. So the reason I wanted to give this example is because you know how we wrote the S of N here, right? Mm -hmm. we, wrote, we wrote this down and then we took the limit and we got infinity. You, I'm telling you, you have to do that, right? If you had not done that up here, right? And you were just like, oh, well, this is gonna stay that's going to stay, that's going to stay, and everything else down there cancels, you'd be wrong, right? Yeah. That'd be incorrect. Because the problem is what's going on down there, even though you're canceling, they're becoming infinitely bigger. And so you get divergence as, as opposed to convergence. So <clears throat> just be careful on the test. You need to do S of N. Got it. Thank you. Yep. Um, I'm not going to do this part B, but I will tell you the setup on this one. The setup on that one is pretty much what I did on the first one. You're going to have to do partial fractions. The only difference between this one and the first one I did here is that, you know, on the first one that I did, do you see how these terms cancel right next to each other? And so it's easy to see the pattern. When you do this other example, they're not going to be right next to each other. They're going to be like, oh, the first one here cancels with the second one, you know, two down or three down. And so it's like the problem we just did. You're going to have to kind of see the pattern and make sure you're establishing like when the canceling is happening. <clears throat> Try it out. See how it goes on your own. All right. Y'all did all right? Pretty much. Yeah. Any questions? I'm kind of wanting to put this section to sleep here. Yeah, I just had one question. Is there any way you could um, send us these notes from today just so I can finish up? Yes. Them down? Yeah, yeah. I'll send, I'll send everything that I wrote down here. I'll send out to you. Okay. Anything else? All right. So the main idea is here. Right, 8.2, .8 the main ideas of 8.2 are, we have the nth term test, right? It's a test to see if something diverges. We have geometric series, we have harmonic series, we have telescopic series. Those are the, the main ideas from this section. Now we're moving to 8.3. A point three is titled the integral and comparison tests. The integral and comparison tests. All right, so first, the first thing we need to establish before we get into this section 
are some things that that hopefully are intuitive and that you that make sense to you that would make sense so this first thing says suppose you got a series right and it converges right now notice that that series starts at one goes one the two the three to infinity right well if that converges do you then do you all agree that if we start at five for the same series it should also converge Like changing, you know, this first one says we're adding up one to infinity, right? And that's going to go to a number. So if I throw out the first four, like one, two, three, and four, and just go from five on, that should converge as well. Removing a finite number of numbers from a series should have no impact on its convergence or divergence. Do you all agree with that idea? Yeah. Okay. So if it diverges, same thing. If you have something that becomes infinite, let's say, and you're starting at n equals one to infinity, then if I go from five to infinity, that should also diverge. Again, taking out four, four numbers out of the list has no impact on the overall convergence or divergence. Do I need to clarify that at all or no good? I can clarify it a little more if you need. We're okay. Sir, I have a question. Yeah. I don't know if I'm confusing the two, but you just how you mentioned that for a geometric series, if you change the initial like the n equals zero, so uh -huh. then you have to say a to a to the power of um r time a times r to the power of just n and not n yes. minus one. Uh -huh. How does that relate here? Um so this is what I'm saying here it just has to do whether or not you converge or diverge, not what you're actually converging or diverging. Or not, let me let me write it this way. Let's do how about this series right here? Tell me if this converges or diverges. Um, I'll make it real straightforward. One half to the n minus one. What type of series is that? Ge I want to say geometric. Yeah, geometric, right? Here a is a is uh one. One. And then R is one half. Mm -hmm. So that converges, right? Yes. Geometric. And it converges. So if I start adding things up, right? If I plug in, if I plug in, let's say uh, N equals one, I'm going to get one plus. Now if I plug in two, I'm going to get a half. And then it's one fourth. Then it's one eighth. And these are all powers of a half, right? One sixteenth. Mm -hmm. That's going to add up to, that's actually going to add up to be a number. And I can actually figure out what that number is, right? Yes. Using the formula. What I just showed you says this, that if you were now to take this sum and start it anywhere else, like, let me say I start at 10. Right? Mm -hmm. that, now what I've done is like, well, you know what, let me start it. Let me start at three, uh, four, let's say. And what I've done is I have asked you to not look at these first four. Don't do those, but start here at 116. Okay. Keep adding forever, right? This is saying that when you do that, you're still going to get a number, right? Now, these yes. are not the same. These are not the same. same okay. Number, okay. Because you've taken, you've started your sum at a different place. But I can still tell you it converges. Understood. If you eliminate, if you eliminate a finite number of terms from an infinite series, it has no impact on the convergence or divergence of the series. Got it. That makes sense. Yeah. Similarly, if we did it the other way, let's say we had sum n equals one to infinity of one over n. That's one plus one half, one third. That's the harmonic, right? And that diverges. That's divergent. This says that if you start at a different place, you know, started at three instead. So that's going to be one third, one fourth, one fifth, right? That this is also going to diverge. By taking out those two, it makes no, it, it has no impact on the overall divergence of the series. Right. Yeah. Okay, that's the first thing we have to understand, all right? Now, 
Let's see if we can't wrap our heads around this new test called the integral test. All right, so first remember this notation, right? We're all familiar with that notation, integral from one to infinity f of x dx, right? That, if that notation means the area under the function f on the interval one to infinity. So geometrically, yeah, I'll show you in a second. Okay, that's what that, that's what that notation means. So I gotta make this a little bit smaller. That's just what, that's just what, um, this is the function one over x squared, okay? So I'm just showing you what one over x squared looks like from one to infinity. I can change the powers here. There's square root of x, there's one over x, one over x squared, just showing you some different graphs from one to infinity. Now, let's take, let's take a, uh, let's take a look at this, this series right here. Okay, let's take a look at that series. And we want to know if that converges or diverges. Well, first of all, it's uh, nth term test, right? It tells us nothing. If you just take the limit as n goes to infinity of that, you know nothing. It's not geometric. It's not harmonic. And it's not collapsing because there's no way to break up that n squared into two pieces. So let me write out what the first few terms are here. We get 1 plus uh, 1 fourth plus 1 uh, ninth. I'm just squaring the number I'm plugging in. Uh, 4, 1, 16, 1 over 25 plus dot, 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 right? I want to know what those are. What is that when I add that up forever? One way I could do this is to look at this as areas of rectangles. So look at this rectangle. Imagine that I draw a rectangle. Well, actually, it's going to be a square, but just imagine I draw a rectangle that has that's one unit wide. So the width of that rectangle is one and the height is um, is also one. Then the area of that would be one, right? One times one. And then for the next one fourth, I'm going to take a, I'm going to take another rectangle. That's one unit wide and one fourth tall. Then the area of that would be one fourth. And I keep doing that for all of these. Smaller rectangle, it's one unit wide, one ninth tall. So the area of that would be one ninth. So it, I'm, I'm trying to find a way to visually like take that sum, one plus one fourth plus one ninth, one sixteenth forever. I'm trying to take that and turn it into a visual problem with a bunch of rectangles where I'm trying to add up the areas. If I think about it that way, then what I can do is I can graph one over x squared Okay, instead of one over n squared, I'm gonna graph one over x squared. There's one over x squared. I'm going to imagine taking just the points, okay, just the sequence points and looking at all those rectangles. So do y'all see on this first rectangle how, how wide this is, is one, and the height is also one. Now it doesn't look, it's not drawing the scale. So the width of it is one, but the height of it is also one. And then the next, the next rectangle, the width of it is one and the height of it is one fourth, all right? And then I keep doing that for all these rectangles. <clears throat> and what I'd like to know is what the air, what, what all these um, rectangles added up, what that total area is. But here's what I can tell you, whatever it is, it's less than that area, isn't it? The area below the function, the area below the function is bigger than the area of, of all the rectangles. So, well, with the exception of the first one, wait, this first rectangle is not underneath the function, is it? No. It's not. But do you remember I just said a finite number of things doesn't change the convergence or divergence? So if I just throw away that first rectangle, it makes no impact on the, on the overall convergence or divergence of this series. Let me, let me give you a different way of looking at this. 
let's say that we have um, say we have it the other way around and we have let's say one over x okay converted to a, C, a series that would be one over m which is harmonic right one over n is harmonic if i do this take a rectangle and make the rectangle instead of going from to the left go to the right so instead of starting at this point and drawing my, my rectangle left i'm gonna draw it right and i do that for all the points you all see that the area of the rectangles here would be more than the area underneath the curve. You'll see that. So all of this is just to kind of give you a sort of a visual idea of the integral test. It's just a visualization. I just want to tell you what the test is. All right. What's the conclusion of the test? The big takeaway. If, <clears throat> if you're given a function f, Okay, so you have to start with a function f that's continuous. That means you can draw it without picking up your pencil. It's positive, meaning it's above the x-axis. And it's decreasing, which means as you move from left to right, it goes down. And then what you do is you consider the sequence where you're just restricting your function to just the natural numbers, one, two, three, four, five. Then we have this. If the integral converges, then so does the series. If the integral diverges, then so does the series. In other words, whatever the integral does, the series does. <laughs> All right. So how do we use this test? So to use the test, here's what we're doing. We're given some series, all right? We're trying to figure out if it converges or diverges. First thing we're going to do is we're going to convert the sequence into a function of f, like a good old-fashioned real-valued function, so we can graph the, the, you know, the curve and find the area underneath. We have to show that the function is continuous. We have to show that the function is positive, which means it's always above the x-axis. And then we have to show that it's decreasing. Once we do those three things, then we evaluate the integral. Whatever the integral does, that's what this, the series is going to do. So that's all in your notes. So let me just get to an example. Let's take, let's take the harmonic. I'm going to start with the harmonic. Does this converge or diverge? Now you should be able to answer this right now because I told you already it's harmonic, right? So we all know that this does what? Diverges. Diverges. Okay, let's, let, let's act like we didn't know that, okay? Let's act like we didn't know that. And let's do the integral test. So I'm going to do integral test, and I'm going to let you know I'm doing integral test. integral integral test so i'm going to first let f of x be equal to one over x so what i'm doing is i'm taking the sequence one over n i'm replacing n with x first thing is f continuous on the intervals uh, one to infinity what do y'all think? Can you plug in numbers between one and infinity into that function without any problems? Yes. Yeah, so it's continuous, right? All right, so we're continuous. All right, step two. Is f of x or is f greater than zero on the interval one to infinity? So is it always bigger than zero? As long as you're plugging in positive numbers, right? We're plugging in numbers between one and infinity. If you take one divided by a positive number, that should be positive, right? So there's no issues here. All right, this is the hard part. Is F decreasing? All right, drum roll. 
How many of you remember in Cal 1 how you can show whether or not a function is increasing or decreasing? Derivative. The derivative, right? If the derivative is positive, it's going up, right? If the derivative is negative, it's going down, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, I want to show you, I want to show that the derivative of this function is negative, right? If the derivative is negative, then the function decreases. So if you go back to your notes here, when I put how to use this test, I put here, you have to show that F is decreasing. And there's two options I tell you for showing it. The option I'm giving you right now is to show that the derivative is zero. Okay, I'm doing that right now. There's another thing I can do, but I'll show you that later on a different example. So I'm gonna show that the derivative is negative. So um, if f of x, well, we know what the original function is, right? f of x is one over x. What's the derivative of that function? Negative x to the negative two. Negative x to the negative two. And that can be rewritten as negative one over x squared, right? And that is always what? Less than zero. Yeah, less than zero. Because your numerator is negative one, your denominator is some number squared. Any number squared is positive. So you're going to have a ratio of a negative and positive number together. So we have the three conditions. We have a continuous function on, on the interval one to infinity. We have a positive function on the interval one to infinity. We have a decreasing function. So as long as we have those three conditions, whatever the integral does, that's what the series does. So now I need to evaluate the improper integral from one to infinity of one over x dx, which is the limit as t goes to infinity. We've done this one before. So natural log x evaluated at one to t. So the antiderivative of one over x is natural log of x. I need to evaluate at the two endpoints. I'm gonna go from one to t and I'm gonna let t go to infinity. This should be limit t goes to infinity of, let's see, natural log t minus natural log one. Just plugging in t and then plugging in one. And that goes to infinity, doesn't it? Because natural log of infinity goes to infinity and then minus natural log of one is zero. So this becomes infinite, which means that it, what the integral diverges, right? The integral diverges. And if the integral diverges, then so does the series. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna put here now, thus this series, this series, diverges. So I just proved to you with the integral test why harmonic series diverges. Questions there? Let's do this one. The first thing I would do on this problem is try the nth term. I take the limit as n goes to infinity of n over e to the n. And if I do that, I get infinity over infinity. So I'd apply L'Hopital's rule. I get one over e to the n again, and then that would go to zero, which tells me nothing. Right? Okay. Now, is this geometric? It almost is, right? Like if this n wasn't here, like had that been one over e to the n, that would be geometric. Because then I can rewrite it as one over e to the nth power. And then I can make that 
that become an n minus one plus one, and then I can use geometric series, right? If it was one over e to the n, but it's not, it's n over e to the n. And so there's no way around that n on top, and that prevents it from being geometric. It's not harmonic, right? It's not a constant over linear, and it's not telescopic. Well, how do I know it's not telescopic? There's no way for me to break this into multiple terms so I can get this collapsing to happen. So the only thing I have left really is the integral test. So I'm gonna let f of x be that sequence, but restricted to x values now. First thing, is it continuous? So can you plug in any number between one and infinity? Can you plug any number into that? Yes. You don't have any issues, right? There's no division by zero anywhere. So that's good, right? How about is the function positive? Is the function always positive? Can you tell? Yes. Yeah, as long as you're plugging in numbers from one to infinity, then your numerator is going to be positive. And e to any power is positive. So that's that's trivial, trivially, trivially, trivially true. The hard part is the decreasing. Is f decreasing? So I had two options here. I can show that the derivative is negative again, right? We can take the derivative of that. The other option in the notes is to, instead of showing that the derivative is negative, show that this, the, the function decreases by using this property, that if A is bigger than B, F of A is bigger than F of B. I always prefer the derivative because if the derivative is not too bad. Um, but just to be thorough, let me let me show you here. Um, I'm gonna use the second option. I'm gonna, well, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna do derivative. It just it lends itself to this problem very nicely. Let's take the derivative. If I take derivative of that function, I'm gonna have to use quotient rule. So derivative of the top is one times the bottom minus derivative of the bottom times the top all over the bottom squared. And that turns out to be e to the x minus e to the x times x over e to the x, but that's squared. And then on the top, I can factor out an e to the x. And I can cancel things out here, but I just want to point out this right here is a positive number. This down here is a positive number. But this right here, once x gets bigger than one, right? Which remember, we're going from one to infinity, right? So once get, x gets bigger than one, that's going to be a negative number. So your derivative is always going to be negative. <clears throat> so you are decreasing. You have to show these things before you use the test. You cannot not show these. You have this is part of using the integral test is that you have to like pay attention to these three things. And now we do the integral from one to infinity of x over e to the x dx. Any ideas on how to do that integral? Does that help if I write it that way? By, by parts? Yep, integration by parts. All 
All right, so I'm not gonna do that, but that should converge. Uh, let's see, let's, uh, where's, there it is. Let's just go and check it out. So I do the integral from one to infinity of x over exponential x dx. Two over e. So you get, it converges, right? Now, very important that you understand something here. This right here goes to two over e, right? Which means that this converges. All that that tells us, okay? Thus, we can say that this series converges. We do not say that it converges to two over e though. Because remember in the picture that I showed you, the integral test is using these rectangles to convince us that whatever one of them does, the other one does as well, but they're not going to the same numbers. So just keep that in mind. The test doesn't tell you, if it converges, it doesn't tell you what it goes to, it just tells you that it converges. All right, <clears throat> I made it through. This is about as far as we can go right now today. Um, we still have to talk about, well, the next thing is P-series. Why don't we, yeah, we have four minutes. I can tell you P-series because P-series, there's no work for us to do. It's kind of like harmonic, where it's just like we know that all harmonic series diverge. Let me just show you what about the P-series. So a P-series is any series of the form one divided by M to the P power. So it could be, you know, P could be one, P could be two, P could be three, P could be a fraction, P could be a negative number, P could be any number. So we can show what, the, what will happen. And it turns out that if P is bigger than one, this will converge if it's bigger than one. And it will diverge if P is less than or equal to one. Now we could, the way you could prove this is by using the integral test, okay? That's how you would prove that this is always true. For us here, we're just going to say, okay, we could prove that we're not going to. And this will be on our sheet, where is it? There we go. So we now have the integral test, right? We now have that. Pay attention that over here, it says that your function must be positive, decreasing, continuous. And now what I just told you was that we have now the, any series of the form one over n to the p will converge if p is greater than one, diverge if p is less than or equal to one. So if, if we, um, if I give you some examples of this, like just looking at this, does that converge or diverge? So what's the power on that N? One half. Half. E series. P is a half. And what happens with the P series when your P is smaller than or equal to one? Diverges. Diverges, okay, this diverges. Now, if you did this, that would be a P series, right? Here, P is three, right? Which is greater than one. Over here was less than one. And so this will converge. And finally, how about this one? One over n. Is that a P-series? Mm -hmm. What's the power? One. What's the power? One, one right? That's a P-series? No. That's not, that's not n to the first power? 
Yes, but I thought it was telescopic. No, that's harmonic. Sorry, right? that. Harmonic. So do you agree that that P is less than or equal to one? Yes. Okay, yes. so if you look at the notes here, it says here that for a P series, it will diverge if it's less than or equal to one, right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm, what I'm trying to tell you here is that one over N is harmonic series, but it's really just an example of a P series when P is one. So if you ever get one over N, you can either say, oh, it's har harmonic and diverges, or you can say, hey, it's P series, P is equal to one, it diverges. In both cases, it does the same thing. Okay. All right. So I'm going to have to look at the textbook to figure out what um, problems you should do. But for 8.2, you should do all the homework now for 8.2. I just don't know at 8.3 how far um, we can go. All right. So let me see if I can still get in here. Um, I appreciate. Oh, it's, it's time to go. Y'all can go if you need to. I appreciate y'all coming and sitting through this. Um, I think we made some progress, all right? So I will hopefully be there on Wednesday. Um, we'll see how I feel. I mean, right now, I it's just a matter of being without a fever for 24 hours. That's what I'm really shooting for. I guess they say you're not contagious after that. So we'll see how it goes. All right? OK. All Thank right. you, sir. Take care. Yep. All right. I will. Y'all take care. Have a good day. I'll send out an email with the homework for 8.3. Have a good day. You too.